I told you. Didn't, didn't I tell you? I told you. Raw denim, it's making a comeback. But this time is different. It's not driven by this, this obsession to look like a miner from the 18th century. It's not driven by this, this Stockholm syndrome feeling of nostalgia. It, it's, it's driven from the fact that the raw denim is a, a damn interesting fabric to make some garments from. We're getting some very, very interesting designers making some very, very interesting styles and silhouettes. Yeah, okay, dare I say it, it's making things more interesting. And this is meaning that there's a whole new wave of people discovering raw denim and they are wearing it just how how they like it's it's meaning that raw denim is shaking off that kind of done and dusty aesthetic that's been that's been haunting it for a minute who me anyway a very telling aspect of this is that gq deigned to make a rundown of 16 of the best styles that they feel or at least that the author jake will feels uh, it defined this raw denim resurgence. And you know what? I love Jake's style, I love his writing, and I love his take on things. So I'm really interested to see what he's got in store for us. With that being said, let's dive in. APC? Oh, fuck. Uh, really, Jake, starting there? Even if you separate the art from the artist, even if you accept the APC, yeah, they were quite foundational in a lot of ways. Even if you accept that a pair of petite new standards were the gateway into the world of raw denim for a lot of people. Even if you do all that, there's just no escaping the fact that their jeans are really not that good. Like, not at all. For those of you lucky enough not to know, petite new standards were like the jean back in, what, 2010, 2012? Eh, whatever. You started your raw denim journey either in a pair of nudies, good choice, or a pair of these. I mean, credit where credit's due. They were responsible for putting raw denim on the map in a lot of ways. They were also responsible for neutering a lot of men of my generation. Yeah, these things were tight, like tight. And in those days, there was absolutely no stretch to be seen. Here, however, things do look a little bit different. These are wide to the point of being baggy, and apparently they have some stretch to them, which seems Utterly redundant given how baggy these things are. Hmm. Okay, let's move on to, it's, it's only gonna be up from here, I hope. Kenzo, Kenzo straight fit jeans. Right, I will fully admit that the only thing I know about Kenzo is there may or may not be a brand called Kenzo. But this is the internet and nobody at any time was ever stopped from saying anything about something they knew nothing about on the internet. So let's give some completely unfounded, unwarranted opinions on these jeans. Okay, I like them. The fit is pretty standard for what's trendy right now. Uh, I'm not sure if they're raw, they look rinsed, uh, but I do like the tone. They've got that kind of like electric blue 70s vibe to them. But what I, I, I like about them, what I really, really like is that these were made, these are obviously made by somebody who's really into denim, who really loves denim, because they are a little bit of a mashup of the big three. You have the, the pocket shape from Levi's, but the contrast stitching makes it look like the pockets are from a pair of Lees. And then there's the patch, which is kind of Wrangler-esque. And also, apparently, Kenzo's from Paris. Next, Buck Mason. Another brand that I know next to nothing about. This whole denim expert thing is um, kind of falling off right now. Okay, but I like it. I, I, I love the fit. They have that really well done dad jean vibe. So plenty of room to the thigh, a high rise, and let's see, 14 ounce denim. So that means it's gonna be, it's gonna have enough heft on it to give a good shape to that slightly wider, wider fit. These are selvage. I'm not sure if the other ones so far are, I guess not. And they've got a paper patch, which I, I love a paper patch. Double dipped. Double dipped in what? It was, if it was double dipped in indigo, then it would mean that it was kind of sky blue. Um, that's a bit weird. I really like the way that they've styled them. Yeah, nice. Oh, and apparently they've been rinsed. So for the first three pairs of jeans out of a list of 16 pairs of raw denim jeans, so far none have been truly raw. Hmm. Uh, next, Wrangler cowboy jeans. Nice. I think it was these, so Wrangler cowboy jeans and the kind of folk who are like, if you know, you know, arbiters of this kind of nonsense. I think it was a combination of 
this that got the whole ball rolling on this raw denim resurgence. I saw a lot of these Wrangler cowboy jeans being rocked by exactly the kind of person I just described there. And they, they always looked amazing. The reason they always looked amazing is because these guys knew enough that, they knew enough to know that if you wanted a pair of jeans to look its very, very best, then it was essential that you take it to a tailor. Because I mean, Wrangler cowboy jeans cost almost nothing. I think they're, you can get them on Amazon for, for less than 40 bucks. So investing in a pair of these and investing a little bit more, actually probably more than the jeans themselves cost, by sending them to, to a tailor to get that perfectly fitting pair of jeans, that seems like a, a pretty good deal. Plus, say what you will about Wrangler, they're still one of the OGs of the big three. And yeah, I mean, it could be said that they're, they're closer to what jeans should be than anything that's come on this list so far. So, approved and also still not truly raw. Next up, we have the Capital Century Denim 5P Monkey Cisco Jeans. Right, here we go. This is the first brand for the real true blue denim head. Capital is like the crazy uncle of the denim scene. They, they do nut stuff, like truly mad stuff. It's like if Visvim were to take some LSD. I mean, this pair of jeans right here, this looks kind of nuts compared to the other jeans in this list. But trust me, this is on the subdued end of the spectrum when it comes to the capital offering. So the denim here is, well, it's kind of a denim, but it's also kind of not. So it's got a denim weave, but it's also got a, a thick indigo yarn woven throughout it that gives it a kind of like chashiko look. This fabric and indeed this style has been the backbone of the capital offering for, for a long, long time now. And I, I love to see it on this list and I'm hoping I'm gonna see them more out in the wild again. Right, next, amazing. Taiga Takaishi, an incredible, incredible Japanese brand. Like, incredible. And also, incredibly, incredibly expensive. Gonna stop saying incredible now. Definitely workwear inspired, but with a lot of European workwear emphasis thrown in there for good measure. All with that kind of like Japanese take on Western wear. I mean, west of Japan, or maybe east of Japan. Um, not, not cowboy stuff, you know what I mean. But for these jeans, yeah, you can see they are taking the early days of the blue jeans as inspiration. So a high, high rise, like a vertical inducing rise. Cinch at the back, super wide leg and, and like an anti-fit seat. Five pockets, yeah, I, I love them. I absolutely love them. And they look to be raw. Yeah, this is the first pair of rods that we've had in the list so far. Okay, that was a great one. Uh, what's what's coming next? The Tega Veneta. Ah, here we go. Uh, capital F fashion. $980. Fuck off. Um, next, 316. 316 CS 100 XK classic straight jeans. Yes, 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 yes. For two reasons. Uh, first reasons, they are the jeans I'm wearing right now. And second reason is that I do work with them, so there's that. I, I'm biased. Yeah, there's no there's no denying that this is an incredible, incredible pair of jeans, really. CS, that's their classic straight cut, um, so based on the 1947, but modernized just enough. And the 100XK, that is the that is their proprietary 14 ounce Kabata denim. The Kabata bit just means that it is unsamphorized and but it's unsamphorized, which means it's gonna shrink. But what they do is they take that denim, sew it into a pair of jeans, give it a rinse, so it takes out all the shrink out of that fabric. So you're getting the best of both worlds. This is true denim head, best of both worlds. You're getting all of the benefits of a shrink to fit, perceived benefits of the shrink to fit denim, but without any of the guesswork that goes along with trying to shrink them yourself. But again, they're not really raw. Interestingly enough, at least for me, 316 have just dropped their CS cut in their like original 14 ounce truly raw denim. So it's samphorized, no shrink, but it's a truly raw pair of jeans. So you've got options. Right, what's coming now? Um, another New York brand, although I guess 316 is bi-coastal, but anyway, yeah, Corridor NYC. Corridor is a bit of a weird one for me because they've been on my radar for a minute, but not constantly. They just pop up every now and again. I love one or two pieces that they do and then they kind of fall off again. But yeah, there's no denying that they make a very nice looking pair of jeans. 
It might just be how they're styled here, but these jeans have got that very 60s look to them, which I appreciate. Huh. Okay. When washed, indigo color will fade by 50%, size will shrink by half. I, guys, I, I think you should maybe have a word with the intern who wrote the copy here. Okay, um, next. Stan Ray OG painter pants. This is a very good, very well executed pair of painter style pants. No bells, no whistles, no frills. Decent construction. Uh, a little bit blue collar stolen valor, but we love that. So yeah, good choice. Okay, next. Next is Acne 1992 regular fit jeans. But they are not regular fits. Are they Acne? They're boot cut. You know, I think I did a video like over a year ago all about avoiding boot cut jeans. I'm not saying I can predict the future, but I'm also not saying that I can't. Yeah, boot cut. Boot cut and flare, it is coming back, like it or not. I think it will be a short lived trend that lives only on the periphery, but it is still, it's still a thing. And I do like Acne as a brand, I really do. I think that their, their vision is, is quite interesting. I think that the collections are always extremely well executed and they occupy the space that they're in very, very well. Yeah, I just think that the, the thing that I have against this particular pair is the transitory nature of this trend. It seems to go against the whole idea of raw denim. I can only imagine that if you are going for this, this specific fit, then it's a little bit of trend hopping. I don't think that you're going to wear them enough to really be your go-to, your favorite pair of jeans. And in that way, you miss out a great deal of, of what raw denim truly is. That whole blank canvas tells a story, it becomes part of your life, blah, blah, blah. Although, yeah, I guess this whole video is all about raw denim becoming a trend again. And these are, this whole fits for, is very trend driven, dri driven, trend driven. So maybe this is the most authentic pair of jeans on this list, at least so far. I don't know, I'm havering. And next we've got the Noah pleated jeans. Hmm, okay, what do they say? Pleats are the easiest way to loosen up a pair of tailored trousers. Who says the same logic can't apply to jeans? I don't know about these and apparently I can't find out much more because the site is password protected, which is a sneaky way to, to get you to sign up for their mailing list. So yeah, Noah, nope. Next, Camille Fortigan's grandma jeans. Am I saying that right? Camille Fort Fortigan's Fortigan's grandma jeans, whatever. It doesn't really matter anyway, so. <laughs> I have two issues with these. First up, it's a, it's a personal one. Um, it, they've got elasticated waists and elasticated waists nowadays are just an absolute no-go. That was my 2023 resolution. I, I need some accountability in my clothing and elasticated waist just lets me get away with far, far too much indulgence. The second issue I have, uh, uh, yeah, I think personally that denim it should just stay in its lane. I don't think denim has got any business being anything that is not really very good at being. So that's like workwear, jeans, jackets. These look more like, these look more like sweatpants. And I'm kind of left wondering the same thing as when I say I see a pair of denim sneakers or a rucksack made of denim. It's just like, uh, but, but why though? Next up. Rick Owens Dark Shadow Geth Jeans. Coincidentally, I was hanging out with the Rick Owens denim developer, designer, production manager the other day, which sounds like a bit of a flex. It's not meant to be that way. Um, I, I know this guy from, from years and years and years ago, and he is a true blue denim head. Suffice it to say, Dylan really, really knows his shit, and these jeans have got some serious credentials backing them up. If you needed any more confirmation that these are dope, self-edge, they carry them. Right, what are we up to now? Uh, 15, okay, we're almost done. Cranson Wach, Wach, 33 raw indigo jeans. That's not the waist size, they're just called 33. Come for the storied comb mills pedigree, stay for the deliciously precise wide, but not baggy fit. That really doesn't tell me much. Right, uh, okay, made in LA. It's actually 333, 333, 333. Mid-rise, wide leg, straight cut jeans and raw indigo denim. The traditional five pocket silhouette showcases our signature W stitch back pockets. 
Ah, okay. I, I wouldn't have got that, but it's a nice touch. Although the pockets are a little bit of a weird shape. 13 ounce, 100% cotton, Cole Mills, North Carolina. Okay, interesting. So Cole Mills, they're a big fabric producer, denim producer. And they used to have this mill uh, called White Oak that I think was in North Carolina, but they closed that down in 2017. And that was the last place in the US that could manufacture salvage denim. So I don't know if these are non salvage denim, but raw or that it's dead stock. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing it's just non salvage denim. Otherwise they'd say it, but these do look like a decent pair of jeans. I'm not a massive fan of the back pockets, but that's just all up to personal preference. What I really like though, is their, their denim jackets. I uh, will come back and have a look at those later because uh, this is not a denim jacket video. This is a jeans video. So um, next pair of jeans. And this is the last one. So uh, the question is, were they saving the best for last or are they just scraping the bottom of the barrel? Whales, Bonner, Wide leg jeans. Honestly, you've got to start working your names. I, uh, or well, maybe there's a certain practicality in just calling a spade a spade. Uh, right. Um, I don't know. There's a lot I like about these jeans and a lot that I really, really don't. Um, I like the fit. I like that it's intentionally oversized. I love that massive hem. I, again, it's the intentionality of these details that I really like. I love the back pockets. They're, they're applied, but they're also, I think, jetted. They've got this jetted pocket detail. It's complete overkill, but it's a nice design detail. What I really don't like and I don't get is the mixing and matching of different fabric on a pair of jeans. Like, why? Why did you do that? Also, why did you put this little zip pocket down here? This seems to be just being different for different sake. That in relation to denim, I really don't like. So yeah, that was pretty much the bottom of the barrel. Right, if you do want the cream off the top, the cream of the crop, um, just mixing up proverbs now. Yeah, if you do want a rundown of five amazing, truly raw denim jeans, then consider checking out this video right here.